talking about important things. So we should be uh, yeah, there's live. two attendees. I'll jump them in. Yeah. Am I the host too? Your co-host already. Oh, Eversource has his own. Whoops. Yeah, that's uh, Chris Hayward. Um, he's going to be joining us. Great. I meant to promote him to panelists, but. All right. <clears throat> Looks like we got a okay. close to full house on committee. So Sarah is here and Britt are here. You can start Ellen's your... here. Ellen's here. Yeah, so we have a, a quorum. Okay. So um just to let everybody know that we are live and recording um the uh February Public Shade Tree Committee meeting, and this will be available um, to view on the town website um, as of Friday, yeah. is when they download all the, the videos. So, Britt is You're on, on, Henry. Sarah, can you um, start your screen if possible? That'd be great. If not, we can move ahead. Um, blah, blah, blah. Somebody, uh, Ellen, do you have the agenda? Do we, need to, do we need to have it up the whole time? It just, that makes seeing each other more challenging. Okay, all right, so we'll, we'll ignore that then, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, there's one person who, a couple people who are here but not showing. Dorothy, Pam, Sarah Lawler, and Rebecca Sharuz. Hope I pronounced that right. Sorry. Um, okay. So um, minute approval. Britt. Yeah. I thought they looked great. And Sarah. I wasn't at the January, so I'll abstain. Okay. Uh, yeah, looked fine to me. All right, so let's approve them pending. I think that'd be fine since Bennett took them, that should be fine. Um, Bennett's not here. So Eleanor Britt, do you wanna be secretary tonight? I can do it. Great, thanks. All right, well, welcome everyone. Uh, we have some guests. We usually start off with the guests uh, to make it, um, they don't have to wait necessarily. So uh, Chris, you wanna unmute and tell us Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks Thank for, you for joining uh, us. Me, thanks for letting me pop in your meeting. I've uh, known Alan for uh, quite a number of years, being part of the Mass Tree Wards and Forests Association. I'm the former tree warden for the town of Watertown and the city of Quincy. And uh, recently went to the dark side. Now I work for Eversource, and I'm trying to change their ways. <laughs> uh, it's been fun. I've been there about eight months. <clears throat> One of my jobs is project services. So um, and I work for the trans, uh, transmission end of the job. So you have a large transmission right of way in your backyard that extends from Wendell down to, and I have to look this up again, Wendell down to, uh, I'm, there's so many right of ways that I work on, but it's about 20 miles. And we're going through a MEPA process right now. And just, um, I'm starting to, and I'm also doing this in the same time I'm doing one over in Lanesboro and, and Dalton and that part of uh, the state. So I'm trying to get out and just meet the public and just try to get some feedback on what pu public concerns are. Obviously, people want reliable uh, electricity. 
But as far as me and Alan are concerned, we want healthy trees as well. So I know that I'm not really on your agenda tonight, and but I just want to introduce myself because I'm going to be getting out in your world, your part of the world, and love to have some allies, love to have some conversation with people, just so that I can relay this back to MEPA that we are talking with people. We definitely care. We definitely uh, know how important the trees are, but we have to try to find a way to get electricity and trees to kind of work together. So that's really what I'm here for. Just to introduce myself and. Hope that uh, I can rely on some of you to maybe uh, help me, put me point me in the right places to talk to the right people, the people that have the most concerns, especially. Thanks, Henry, you're muted. Um, I just wanna thank Chris for, um, this is kind of last minute thing. We can invite Chris back for the next hearing. We can get it on the agenda. Um, he also had discussed doing some uh, sort of pop-up, uh, you know, days where he comes into the community and is there to answer questions and things like that um so um we hope to invite chris back you know next next month if possible um to go into more detail or to at least let everyone know when the pop-up is going to be so people can ask questions and um, find out what's going on so thanks chris for coming hey thank you for having me yeah thank you so much we have had concerns with Ever saw us before, but Alan's usually had a good relationship with the person who had your job before, and uh, we usually worked out pretty well. Yeah. So this, um, just to clarify, so the, he is talking about the, the transmission lines. So this is okay, not right. the distribution yeah. lines on the street. So right. um, this is kind of a new position in Eversource, and they're um, you know just kind of trying to get ahead of the game and let and inform people what's going on. Um, so they're going to be working on those those high tension lines. Um, that deliver lots of power to lots of people. So, Great. which we, as tree warden, I don't have jurisdiction over those trees unless they are next to the street where the lines cross the streets. Um, and the Shaker Committee doesn't, you know, necessarily, it's not in your um, uh, purview to, you know, oversee that area. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity, a good venue to begin the process of letting the public know um, what's going on. So, Great. thank you. Go right yeah. to the people that care the most. Great. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for being here. I, I get the sense that you're headed out shortly and you'll be back um, in the future. And one question I would have uh, in the future is just like what you see as the major um, touch points with with trees in the work that Eversource is doing with these with these power lines, right? Like I don't have a sense if of whether or not like new areas are being cleared as the power lines are being redone or what the key issues are that would threaten trees potentially. So just hearing a little bit about that, um, learning sure. more would be, would be helpful. And again, you don't have to answer that now, but but at some point when you have a um, more time or, or we have that opportunity, it would be great to hear. Well, I'll certainly have a presentation prepared. I can go through a PowerPoint presentation. We could talk all about it. We're still in the developing kind of phase with this um, this work right now. Uh, we're, we're in the MEPA phase. The, the city, the town of Amherst has been communicated with. We're going to be coming before the Conservation Commission, which that will be a, a chore in itself, just because there are a lot of wetland areas that we'll be working around. Um, so I'll definitely have something uh, prepared. Hopefully uh, I'll be available for uh, your next month's meeting and uh, I'll have some prepared. But if not, I'll, I'll find a way to make sure that I can speak with anyone in the area that wants to talk with me. Thank you. Sure. Great. Thanks, uh, Dorothy. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate now, but we at the town council, we've some, and and I don't know, transmission lines above underground. When talking about pole placement, we have been asking, can those wires go underground? And so I thought it was just be a nice time to ask whether that is a possible direction for Eversource or whether there are reasons where you don't want to consider that at all, because that would be really great for trees and for the and also for to protect from storms. Certainly, uh, for from my perspective, uh, I don't really deal with the pole placement. Uh, that would be more engineering and operations. Um, so I, I don't really have um, any kind of real say there. Uh, mm -hmm. What I can tell you, and Alan could probably back me up on this, is you know putting wires underground creates the same kind of problems for trees as we do pruning up top because we're cutting roots and we could even do more damage to them. So 
you know, you really have to know where you're placing these poles, where you know where you're going to place these wires, do some prep in advance, root pruning, all types of different things. Uh, so it's, it's, it's hard either way. Uh, you, you know, utilities and trees don't necessarily want to coexist together the very best way. So right tree in the right place. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Anyone else have questions or comments for Chris? Oh, Julian, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, my question is like, how is the pruning done on the, uh, forgive me for what they're called, not the transmission lines, but the other type of line. Um, like, is it done via just trimming it as you would a normal tree or do you have like I've seen in videos and stuff where they take a helicopter and trim along the side of the wires. Is there any difference on how that impacts the trees or that type of thing? Well, I can tell you that when we're using a helicopter, we're not going to get the fine cuts that we'd like. Of, of yeah, we're looking more those that's more for side maintenance trimming. And that is more for those wires are getting very close to a very powerful wire those trees are getting to very close to a very powerful wire that would not be safe to put a man next to. So we have a helicopter that goes down and they have a blade that comes down along the side okay. and just cut along the edges. So they're not the best cuts for sure. And I'd never stand up and say that that's the way we should be cutting trees. Uh, unfortunately, uh, without removing an entire tree, and we're trying to save as many trees as we possibly can, but make them safe as well. So uh, so it is transmission. You had said this, you weren't thinking of the transmission, but I'm on the transmission side. When we go and prune along the streets, that's called distribution. And that's, um, that's where men are in bucket trucks, in some cases climbing, um, and they can do a little bit better of a job. Uh, when we're out in the wild, the rights of way, especially out in Western Mass, where it's a little bit more rural, uh, mm -hmm. it's tough to get in vehicles. So Got we it. have helicopters come in. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. All right, I don't see any other hands or comments. So thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for your time. I'll be in yeah. touch. Good. I'm so hang around to have you back. Bit, if you don't mind. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, guess. Uh, Dorothy, would you like to introduce yourself? And I think Bennett asked you to come. He did. Um, he's, he's away um, on a family trip right now, so he's not here. Um, well, Dorothy, Pam, um, I live on Amity where the, your committee has been planting some new trees the last couple of years. Um, and I'm a member of the town council and I'm dedicated to trees and saving as much. And uh, this is um, Alan's phrase, our um, you know, urban forest, okay? And I, I feel this is really challenging right now, uh, extremely challenging. Um, you know, Bennett had asked me if there was a possibility of, of the town council or the town getting a line for trees in the budget. And um, I, I wanted to find out some more from you what exactly you had in mind, but my off the top of the head thoughts are that's gonna be very difficult right now in this particular season when uh, the budget is challenged and we're in a time of, of transition. Um, I would think that for the near future, there's gotta be some more of that special government ARPA money, which I know is not, you want to have something you can plan on, something that it is, is not just up to getting grants. But I, I think that for the near future, trying to get some of that money, which um, some of it sounds like it's kind of loose and one could work at it. Um, I agree that there should be a budget for maintenance, not just planting new trees, which you, you've been doing from a grant, but, but much more money for maintenance, whether that's using our present town workers or hiring an outside um, you know, contracting outside to come to do it, uh, to keep the um, trees in shape. For example, um, now the trees I'm thinking of are on private property, but there's a whole bunch of, of these thin pines between my property and the next property. And I've been here for 12 years, um, maybe 10, maybe 15 have blown over in that time because they are just unwieldy. They were allowed to grow too tall um, with just you know, a little bit of stuff at the top and they should not have been. They should have been pruned, but it wasn't done by the people that were here. And I'm sure that that's true for many of our town trees, that that if there is this proactive pruning, um, that you'd have a longer life and it would be better. So um, 
that's what I, I would like to try to help you and work with this to see if we can get a line in the budget. I just think that right now, um, the budget seems to be quite stretched and there is this money that's still kind of floating out there. So I'd love to hear your response to whether you think that you can get some more of that. So thank you. Go ahead, Britt. Yeah, I would just say that it's it's kind of disheartening to hear, you know, and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, but it's a little bit disheartening to hear that, you know, trees are are not seen as a priority in that they are, you know, so closely tied up with many of the goals the town is working toward related to climate change and equity and, you know, livable, having a livable town or livable city, right? And the, the urban canopy, the value of an urban canopy to a community is, is very great, not just from an ecological standpoint, but of course, when we're thinking about how um, people benefit from, you know, cleaner air, shade, reducing, you know, urban heat island impacts, um, uh, green spaces, and and so on. So it's so it's a little bit disheartening that, to hear that trees are not really recognized for that potential role when the budgetary ask would be relatively minimal from, uh, from the standpoint of looking at the entire town budget, um, but. You know, I understand it's complicated. I would, I would just suggest um, that perhaps the council, the council and and decision makers could could think more broadly about the the value of of tree cover. Thank you. Oh, the, the, I return this. There's something out of here. Okay, um, if you would write up a request of that type, I would certainly be proud to try to present it. Uh, it's in direct conflict with another goal of the council, which I'm against, okay, which is the increased density, particularly of our, our uh, center residential neighborhoods. There is a, just a huge push to replace our trees, our yards, our, our gardens with more and more uh, building, where right now we're just getting geared up to deal with a plan right in the heart of our neighborhood, which would have uh, three more dwellings um, in the backyard with a parking lot for 20 cars, okay? So, you know, adding all this impermeable stuff, it's a battle, it's a battle, and trees are very, very important. And I tell you, in my district, um, we love our trees um, and um, we will fight for them. But um, there's been a lot of trees cut down um, in my area, on the residential area this year. Different reasons for, you know, you know there is reasons why trees have to be cut down sometimes. But one of the major reasons is really they want more density and development. So that's the that's the challenge. But I think linking it to the climate change plans is totally the way to go because that is something the town is trying hard on and is proud of. And if they're not going to put the tree part in there, then it's it's not a good plan. It's not a good plan. So. Yeah, and I I, I would be happy to write something up. I'm sure other members of the committee would be happy to do that um if it would help get things uh get the conversation started with with the council and take it in a positive direction i would also just suggest that um density and tree coverage don't necessarily have to be pitted against each other um mm -hmm. and in fact you know i i will just mention i teach um in environmental conservation at umass i was teaching a class today about environmental education and i was reviewing the numbers in Massachusetts um, of residents that have access to what would be called a green space um, or, or um, the percentage of residents that are so-called nature deprived. And in Massachusetts, um, some I think it's 94% of white residents have access to green spaces and access to nature. And 14% of communities of color have access to green spaces and access to nature. And so it is a major equity issue. And I would suggest that in, in this town, we have those same issues um, that are that exist across the state. And so, you know, again, I don't think it's density or trees. It has to be mm -hmm. in, in some cases density and trees. Um, you know, and uh, there are lots of complicating factors there. So I will I will stop talking, but I wanted to say that. Interesting. Thank you. So um, our, our purview is really street trees. We've expanded our role to educate people about the value of trees. We're talking about a significant tree ordinance and other ways to protect trees that aren't just in the, um, the public rights of way, but um, 
a, a budget line item in this regard would be to plant trees within or to maintain trees within the public rights of way. And um, that's something that, yeah, I, Britt mentioned it'd be a small percentage. I understand the taxes are going up and we need the school and the library and everything. It's kind of hard to ask, but the amount we're asking for as a percentage of those projects is just minuscule. So um, can we attend a, a town council meeting and make a presentation or should we just give you something to present? Um, no, I, I, will, I will speak to Lynn about that and, and say that we want to put it on the agenda um, and then I get back to you. Okay, thank you. All right, I will definitely uh, do that. Sarah. Hello, um, I had, I guess I maybe two points. Um, I wanted to second what Britt was saying about uh, having it be, you know, pro density and pro trees, right? And that deals with the equity issue that Britt was talking about, but it also offers the opportunity in places like Amherst that have a decent amount of existing urban canopy to preserve large areas of trees in certain areas. So like the, the best way in urban planning to go about densifying is to concentrate it in certain areas like downtown, because then you balance that by preserving wilderness areas, areas with large contiguous trees and setting that aside specifically for you know, conservation land so that you have areas that are more forested and that can be publicly accessible too. Um, but there has to be a way to, to definitely include trees in those developed urban areas. Um, so I, I think that there's a way that we can navigate this as a community to include trees in our downtown, but also to concentrate our development there so we don't end up with sprawl that ends up reducing large contiguous areas of trees. Um, so I just wanted to, to second that. I think it's really important that we be really smart in planning for the future in terms of, of trees, which have a longer lifespan than most people do. Um, and then to that point, I wanted to know if there was any... Um, subcommittees maybe in town council that we should connect with who are kind of working on um, those development plans, the, um, you know, people who, the bid maybe, or, you know, any other groups that, that you think that we should connect with to that end of advocating for trees, both in large areas that can be, uh, you know, put aside for conservation and then also in our developed areas to make sure that we have, you know, trees throughout town and access for underprivileged communities. Uh, well, well, I would say that, that we have a problem now with some of our zoning in that some, many of the projects that we have okayed in the last several years have not had access to even around the site decent green space, I would say, where is there a place for someone, for two chairs to be, for someone who lives in that building to sit down and talk with someone? And there is not that space being provided. So it's, it's, it's I gotta tell you, I, I totally agree, but it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And, and so um, I think that zoning has to deal with it. I mean, I, I what, one of the things that Okay, the archipelago buildings on the west east side of, of North Pleasant have not provided any reasonable green space for their residents or for residents and town people. And the answer I've gotten is, oh, well, we redid the park. And I, you know, the town paid for that park for the public. And I now see it as being used as an, a private entity, profit-making entity, not to provide something that they should have on their own property. Um, so we are doing a great job and we're trying to, um, and I will tell you that I've, some of my friends are very annoyed with me. I voted to remove parking on the North Common because I really am a traditionalist in some ways and I want a New England Common to be a common and not a parking lot, even though I like that convenience of the present parking lot. Um, so the town's plan is really good on redoing the, uh, the common. But Every group of housing should have some place someone could sit or stand outside on their quote unquote own property or the property of the building they rent in. And that is not being provided at this time. So um, uh, just wanted to point that out. So it's, it's I, I regard it as a, a real battle, a real battle. So, so you think it's, um, it's the zoning board that's someone that we could try to collaborate with? The zoning board, I think, should recognize that every property or building must have some 
green space and not just say, well, it's two blocks away. We have wonderful conservation lands in this town. If you have a car or you're a good bicycle rider, you can get access to nature, okay? But um, that doesn't mean that everybody does. So the, the hikers and the bikers, they we've got really wonderful green space, but green space, which is outside your door for the person who's working and very busy and just wants to just you know, be outside for a little bit. That is what is not being included in many of the new buildings that are being done. So I, I, I think planning board and zoning are important on this um, because yes, they are working on density, but density with green. Uh, they did draw some plans not too long ago, but then they disappeared. So they need support. The zoning department needs support from the public, from your committee to understand that, that this is necessary. And it is part of the overall climate goals of the town, which are being taken seriously. They are being taken seriously. Yeah, I think this is an important thing we have in the past approached and met you know, we met with the Zoning Board of Appeals and with the Planning Board, and I think it's time to redo that, as well as um, send something to the Town Council. Uh, yeah, I, I will answer. They're trying to make a zoning. There's a zoning change in the that's going to remove most of the new buildings in the residential areas and declare them by right, and take them. Um, out of the hands of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Now, if you have attended any of the Zoning Board of Appeals on the new townhouses on the Lincoln Fearing, I'm um, Sunset Fearing, you will know that the Zoning Board of Appeals did a great job with the help of community people in increasing the green space uh, and the private and public uh, space for the community. For example, even replacing a swale for some water thing uh, and doing it underground and putting a little playground on it. And, um, so there was a lot of good work done by the Zoning Board of Appeals, but the new zoning measure, which is being proposed by um, um, committee, a CRC right now, um, is really reducing the role of the Zoning Board of Appeals and reducing the role of the Planning Board and making more development just by right. So that, I think, works against some of the things you were talking about. Yeah, sometimes I'll just add my thoughts here. What I often struggle with is you'll have a developer come to the zoning board with a proposal and they might want to remove this tree or not add such green space or whatever in their original proposal. And what we really need is to be able to work with the zoning board and work with the residents in the area and work with the developer to say, hey, you have a 100 unit project here. Why can't you make this a 95 unit project and save these two trees and add some green space for some of your residents? That doesn't feel like too big of an ask for me, but sometimes I guess I struggle with, is that our role as a committee or not? Because to some extent, our role is just around the tree, not around their project. However, if they were to remove a certain amount of units, they could accommodate to keep the tree. So, I, I, I totally agree. But you know, take a look at one of the latest archipelago ones. They cut back the sidewalk. I went and measured it. I didn't write it down, but I think it was like it was. You, could, you couldn't pass with a stroller. Two people with strollers could not pass each other. So there's certainly no room for a street tree. I mean, if you build so close up to the edge, then there's no. Not only are you impinging on uh, not, not doing much trees on your own property, but you're making it hard for the town to put trees on there too. So I, I, I think push back, uh, Julian, I think you're totally right. Push back. If we are too accepting, too polite, then people will do what they can do. If, you, if I can get 100 units, I'm going to go for 100 units if I'm a businessman, which I'm not. But um, we have seen in the ZBA the developers pulling back a little bit in ways that didn't hurt the developer and it do, moving more towards the quality of life for the tenants. And I think that's really kind of important. Um, also to create community. If you can't gather outside around your property in some green space, how are you going to have good relationships and, and community, which is a very big topic right now because we're coming out of COVID and a lot of people are much more isolated than they were before. Um, so I, I think it's doubly important. Yeah, I, I would just chime in. I know we probably need to move on, but um, 
I think I think those changes, let's say the example Julian gave of reducing 100 units to 95 to accommodate these green spaces or additional tree plantings, that will never happen um, without a requirement, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if the town is able to impose these requirements um, and, and various committees that share these common interests are able to articulate, you know, the value of green space, the value of trees, um, to community, to these larger points that the town is is trying to move forward on around climate and equity and community and you know development all at once. Um, you know, I think I think it could be interesting to to bring together some of these committees, some of these entities in town that that share these interests and try to figure out how to articulate um, a, a coordinated case um, to make perhaps some zoning requirements for green space um, for new development. And and I think using the, the the equity word is helpful. Uh, what what some there, there are some people on the council who feel that some of the older residential neighborhoods are um, bastion of white supremacy, and um, just have no interest in it. Um, so I think that um, we, if you think there are many neighborhoods in town which have uh, a mixture, including the neighborhood around the downtown, um, and it is it is an equity matter, um, you know. So I, I think that I think you're framing it very well, and I'd love to see your proposal. So that's really how I wind it up for me. Great, thank you. I just want to add, Henry. I was I just want to let the committee talk. I didn't want to pipe in. Um, yep. Thank you, Doris. Uh, Dorothy for coming um, and talking to everybody. I appreciate that, it's great. Um, we are working on a new management plan, urban forestry management plan for the town, uh, which will include trying to encompass all the, the planning regulations and things out there um, that are currently impacting decisions around trees. Um, you know, the, the solar, the requirement for parking that, you know, it has to be paved or some kind of you know, firm surface, which, which has resulted in a lot of trees being cut down just for parking, to improve mm -hmm. parking. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully in the next, you know, four months or so, I can get a good uh, good draft to send out for people to review. Great, thank you. All right, um, Rebecca, would you like to say anything? Or are you just observing? Go ahead, you have to unmute and then you can talk. Oh, you should be allowed to talk, but I'll try it again. Hi. Hi, we um, hear you now. Sorry, I think there was a, a mishap with the panelist condition, you know, permissions, but I just want to say hello. Um, it's nice to see what this group is about. Um, I just wanted to see what you guys do. Um, and yeah, it's been cool so far. <laughs> Yeah, nothing really of import except to say hello, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for attending. What's that, Alan? I said thanks for attending. Yeah, yeah thanks for attending. And um, we meet every month, and starting in April, we do tree planting and tree care uh, work every second Saturday of the month. So if you um, can put your email address in the chat, or if you get our emails already, then you're on our list, but I can make sure you get updates on what happens for the next uh, the next bunch of months. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I think the chat is disabled, at least on my end, but I do okay. appreciate it. Yeah, there is no chat. Um, okay. um, uh, well, we have a chat, but I guess that's just for members. All right. Um, our email address is, um, what is it? Um, Anyone know our email address? Shane Trey CMT at gmail.com. Thank you, Julian. Yeah. Yep. So send us an email. We'll put you on the list and um, make sure you get the information that's happening. Thank Great. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Now to the agenda um, hours. Let's do hours first. We approve the minutes. Um, Sarah, I didn't get hours for you last month either. So yeah. did you go for to go first? Yeah. Four. Whoa. Uh, 
Does Rain know she's being recorded? No, she's blissfully unaware. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. wow. Yeah, wow. Hours or? Um, what? I would say, oh yeah, Sarah said four. Okay. Are you just soliciting general input Great. about? Okay, um, I would say seven after all the Mary Maple with distribution stuff. So. Okay, Ellen? Um, I think just two. Two, Julian? Probably 10. 10. And I'll say um, seven for me. All right, and we'll find out from, I know Ben had put out the newsletter, but I don't know what else, so. I'll find those out. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is uh, the chair's report. Um, where is it? In front of me. Um, locations is one thing we're going to talk about later, so I'll skip that for now. Um, I want us to talk about planting trees as a committee rather than having Alan do that, especially for individual trees that don't meet up for um for a, a for a monthly plant so we can talk about that if we have time today or put that on the agenda next month uh, i want to remind everyone arbor day is the 28th and the sustainability festival is the saturday before that which i don't know the date uh 22nd maybe i think it's the 22nd of april but keep those on your calendar and we need to be planning for the sustainability festival um 22nd 22nd, thank you. Um, the display, we have the signs. Alan, I think you ordered some trees or are going to. Seedlings, we're gonna get some seedlings. Yeah. Yep. Have we chosen the variety? No, that's what I wanted to discuss uh, this evening. Okay, so we'll do that a little later. Um, and then um, I'm going through some health things and um, may not be around much this spring. I'll be, I should be around the next, uh, through, through April, but after that, I'm not sure. So I may have to miss a few months. Um, we need to think about who might be the temporary chair. I don't know if Julian can do that or if someone else wants to take some responsibility, but we need people to step up in general. Also, I don't know how many more years the um, uh, town council will permit me to be on the tree committee. I was bumped off once, so. Um, we need to be aware of that. So start thinking about ways that each of you can take more responsibility with the committee and how we can keep the committee moving ahead and doing the good stuff that we want to do. If you do have to be out for health issues, either at plantings or um, meetings, I would be happy to be an interim chair. Thank you, Julian. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, with support from other people, that would be great. Um, and I think that's about all I have on my list. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah, let's think more about how each of us can be more effective and get a, a few more things done and work on some of the projects we've talked about but haven't pursued. So I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, Julian, you want to give your report? Yep. Um, I was just going to note one thing in the Shade Tree Committee email. There was a survey from a UMass student about how committees function and whatnot. So I went ahead and filled that out. Uh, they sent me a thing back saying you have to be over 18 for this, et cetera. So I'm not sure if I'll actually end up being counted there or not. But um, that is my only update there. And I've Excuse been driving around town looking at um, different I just one working. second. I filled out that survey as well. So okay, perfect. Uh, we are represented. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Other than that, I've just been researching different planting locations around town. I have a list of two or three places. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alan. All right. Um, <clears throat> we do have a tree hearing coming up, which we will need to schedule a site visit for uh, for March uh, March tree hearing at the March. Shade tree before the March shade tree meeting. Um, it's on the North Amherst Common. It's um, you know where uh, North Amherst Common, if you don't know, is uh, 
on North Pleasant Street, where North Pleasant Street intersects with Meadow and Pine Street um, at that intersection. On the west side of the road, North Pleasant Street, there's a large grass area um, with some trees on it. Um, it's actually a it's actually referred to as the North Amherst Common, um, and it's getting a uh, a new multi-use path that's going to go from uh, Meadow Street um, down North Pleasant Street, eventually, hopefully, all the way to um, uh, Governor's Drive uh, that you masked by the roundabout there. So the goal is to give everyone from North Amherst a safe place to transit along North Pleasant Street uh, that's not in the road. So this is sort of a first phase and it's an eight foot wide path. So we've, um, I've been working with our town engineer and trying to find the path that is least destructive to trees. Current path is four feet wide and it's actually at the, the back edge of, the, of the, the sidewalk, which is on the Western edge of the common. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So there's some mature trees that already line that sidewalk. And it would be devastating to those trees if we put an eight foot wide sidewalk there. So how many trees so are we, affected? <clears throat> so we are actually moving the sidewalk out towards the road um, where there's a pretty good sized grass area that's not gonna disturb much tree roots. It will require one kind of scraggly nori maple that will need to come down and we need to move um, probably three of the trees that we recently planted there um, a couple of years ago, because um, that's where we're going to put the sidewalk. So moving the trees is not a big deal. We can move them, uh, and they're going to go right back on the common. So they we're not, we're not going to lose them, um, but uh, we will actually gain tree planting spaces. Um, the old sidewalk that is up against the houses uh, property line is gonna go away from much of that stretch. So we're actually going to remove that asphalt and give those trees, mature trees there, some breathing room uh, to grow, um, to continue to grow. So it's it's actually a pretty good plan and we work pretty hard to preserve uh, those trees. Um, and we gained, we gained green space actually, so. Um, so we need to schedule that. There's one more tree that will, for the North Amherst Common, that the, a recent change to the plan. There's a, a birch tree that's up against Town Hall. Um, there will need, they will need to remove that tree. It's a two stem birch tree. They're probably 12 inches in diameter or so, two stems. There was a third stem that failed in a windstorm. Um, probably about four or five years ago when we took, we took that part out. Um, but the two remaining stems would need to go for the North Amherst Common Project. That is not in the public way and does not require public shade tree hearing. Um, I just want to let the committee know. Do we want to discuss uh, a, a site visit now, a date or later? We would have a tree hearing at our next meeting is that the plan before the next meet before the next meeting uh <clears throat> probably 4 30 or 5 o'clock um we could do it at five and run over into the you know potentially to six and cut into the shade tree meeting i know people have work conflicts so going before 5 30 can be difficult for folks um, so we should do the site visit on a different day then Maybe the yes. Tuesday before that. That would be, that's right. Yeah, we've been doing that. It seems to work out. Yeah. Uh, how many people are available the first Tuesday in March? Maybe the seventh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm around that day. Okay, so we do five o'clock. I know that might be a little early for you, Sarah. How early could you get there? Yeah, I'm, I work until six, so I'd have to probably just rearrange my work schedule, try to 
leave a little early that day. Um, well, let's, we can do 5.30, any later than that, it's probably gonna be dark. 5.30 would, would be best for me if that works for everyone else. Okay, 5.30 on the 7th, yeah. Okay, so you'll publicize that, Alan? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. And then we'll have the hearing on uh, the 14th. Um, let's do it again at 5.30. We'll just start our meeting a little later. Okay. So our meeting will start at six then. Unless we get a lot of people at the site visit and we need to have a schedule a longer meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, the rest of it, I don't have much more to report. Um, we are making good progress on some tree work. It's, you know, the winter has been phenomenal for getting tree work done. Um, grinding stumps, uh, we're making good progress. Um, I have uh, some locations for the second side of the tree planting for in neighborhoods where we've, they've been losing a lot of the old sugar maple trees are coming down. So, um, you know, I, I can, we can talk about that. I think that's on the agenda later. Yep. There's a um, tree conference coming up at UMass that folks might want to know about. It's the UMass Community Tree Conference. It's online. It's not in person. Uh, they used, they have some great presentations. It's seventy five seventy five dollars, um, and uh, Mastery Wardens gives out some scholarships there as well. Uh, our seedling program, which where we're getting our seedlings from, um, portion of those funds go towards a scholarship for Stockbridge students uh, to help them out with uh, and non Stockbridge students that need to be in the forestry program, urban forestry program. Um, so uh, it's a great you know day long. Uh, online um, opportunity to learn about urban forestry, community tree, community tree care. Um, and then uh, in March, March 29th, there's a Arbor Expo happening in Springfield, um, which is like a three day, two, two or three day um, expo with uh, vendors and educational opportunities, all about um, arboriculture and um, urban forestry trees, everything tree. Um, so you might be interested in looking at that, um, you know, the agenda for that and checking out the um, topics you might want to hear about. So. Can you send me the links for those two things and I'll pass them out to the committee? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I've used to go to the, there was a big New England wide um, tree expo in Boston. New England um, grows. New England grows. And I used to go to that. It was wonderful. It was just, you get to see new varieties of trees and just meet a lot of people doing all kinds of work around trees. So, um, so this, I, this is kind of a spinoff from that group. Yeah. yeah West, so it's some of those same people are kind of doing this now. So that they stopped doing that a couple of years ago, more than a couple of years ago. And this is sort of what they've come up with. So great. And um, do we want to do seedlings? Do we want to do seedlings now or later? In the meeting. What's that? Choice of seedlings for Arbor Day. Um, sure. Before we go on to that, though, let's, um, what's the date of the UMass um, conference? Uh, the 28th. Tuesday, the 28th, from 8.30 to 3.30. Okay, and then the 29th is the Tree Expo. So the 29th is, is March. Oh, um, right. oh, so February. Yeah. February 28th is the UMass. Okay. And you can uh, go to the UMass Extension um, website and you can find the online program there. Right. I will probably drive down to the Tree Expo if people want to go, um, if I can that day. So let me know. All right. Um, yeah, let's move on. Um, oh, Treasures Report before we go any further. We have $14,912.79, which has been the same since December. Thank you. All right. Um, so presentations and discussions. Um, first thing is the Mary Maple, um, the Love Letters exhibit and the wood giveaway. Britt, do you wanna talk about those? 
Sure. So on the wood giveaway, um, you know, we had to had the original, I think about 40 people who had signed up to receive or to come collect pieces of the Mary Maple at the event. Um, and so I wasn't expecting it to be a huge turnout for that, but um, I had said something about it on on my social media account and uh, Scott, the reporter from the Gazette had contacted me and said, hey, can I put this in the paper? And I said, sure, no problem. So I ended up having um, many, many, many more people than expected who came, um, people who were not at, able to be at the event come um, to collect pieces of wood. Um, you know, it was just a really positive, uh, thing to do to, to give out this wood and hear people's stories of this tree. You know, for example, we had, um, a couple, I would say probably in their eighties who are living at Applewood who came to collect two pieces to mail to their sons now in their late fifties who live across the country, um, because they had shared time under that tree for many decades. Um, the UMass marching band director or the minute, minute man, Mark, whatever it's called, the Minuteman Marching Band uh, director asked for a piece. They were going to uh, display it uh, where they practice. Um, lots of craftspeople. Actually, there was one person, and I I don't know if, Alan, you ended up coordinating with her, but a woodworker who had formerly lived in Amherst, now currently in Maine, who requested a large piece and would like to make a table um, to donate to our committee which we would then be able to raffle off or auction off to help raise funds for new tree plantings. Um, so I, at some point we'll, we'll follow up with her. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was great to have so many people from all over town of all different ages come and, and take a piece of that tree and um, hear their stories. So it was successful. I still have uh, a bit of wood, quite a bit of wood. Alan had to make two deliveries to my shed um, because we went through the first bit pretty quickly. Um, so if you all hear of other folks who are looking for pieces of the tree, including a couple big rounds that ended up not being claimed, um, feel free to send them my way. Um, <laughs> and um, in terms of the letters to the Mary Maple, I, I did go through those um, it's been a couple of weeks now, but there, there are, you know, again, it's, I think I had mentioned at a previous meeting and there, they were mostly from kids, but not exclusively. And so, um, we could, we could do a little exhibit of some kind at the library. Um, you know, I guess I would, I would like to hear from others at some point, um, what, the best way forward with that is, and maybe I, I, I haven't given it thought in the last month, but, um, you know, a, a little exhibit I think would be, would be nice either at the town hall or at, um, at the library and then, and then entering those into some kind of public archive related to the tree, um, I think would be good. Yeah. Thanks. If, um, it's mobile, we could also bring it to the sustainability festival It'd be a nice place to have that. That's true. Yeah, we could arrange something. And that's um, on the common, so it's fitting. Yeah. I want to thank I want to thank Britt. She, you know, she put a lot of time into this. Um, inviting people to our house to come pick up pieces of the Mary Maple and coordinating and calling and emailing people. Um, you know, that that was big. I mean, that was a heavy lift. The whole whole event was a heavy lift. And um I'm I'm so grateful for the effort um Britt put into this and, and the committee. Um, to to make the this you know terrible sad event of removing the Mary Maple some kind of positive <laughs> outcome to it and uh, thank you Britt yeah yeah and I was away and uh, Britt really you know I'm reading the emails and seeing how Britt had just totally taken charge of that so it was great it was a group effort yeah but you led it I appreciated that. All right, anything else in the Merry Maple? No? So Arbor Day plans, seedlings and events. Um, what are our choices, Ellen? So they got the usual like blue spruce and things like that. White spruce, Douglas fir, white oak, tulip poplar, pin oak, Fraser fir. Um, 
hackberry, they have pawpaw, which is interesting, ginkgo, lilac, eastern redbud, serviceberry. Um, I, I think it'd be cool to get pawpaws. It's not something we usually get. Um, not sure what else. The last year we bought 200 seedlings. And we had about maybe 25 left over that we tried to heal in and down at Ruxton and keep them watered, but we just couldn't keep up with the watering last year. We lost a lot of them. It was just too dry. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good opportunity to, to um, give seedlings out. So if you want to do 200 seedlings, you have to, minimum order is 100 per species, so. I think any, I think anything native, anything that um, people are going to get excited about, like pawpaws, I think service berries, right? Like these charismatic trees that that people get excited about planting and harvesting things from. Um, you know, I think people like ginkgos. Um, yeah, that's just my. Those are my thoughts. I think the pawpaw is also a great idea. I would favor the other choice being a large shade tree and maybe tulip poplars being the best for that. Um, ginkgos not being native don't have much benefit ecologically. They're nice, but uh, I think a tulip, I would go for tulip and, and pawpaw. What do other people think? Uh, I would tend to agree. Yeah, um, that new species seems pretty interesting and having some sort of large substantial tree that we can give out is good because a lot of people lean toward more towards the ornamental trees. I I agree and I think as the shade tree committee it's nice to offer shade trees. I definitely vote for pawpaw which also takes some shade um, so I think that's nice. A lot of people don't have the opportunity for plant you know planting trees that need full sun all the time. Um, However, I will just throw out there that a lot of people want smaller trees or don't have room for large shade trees on their own land. Um, so having a service berry or a red bud, which are super popular, might just we might just end up handing out more trees that way. So I I I want to offer shade trees, and we're the shade tree committee. And I you know I love the tulip poppers myself, but I think we might end up handing out more trees to more people if we offer something that's a, an understory tree that's a little smaller and can take some shade. Dorothy? Um, I, I just wanted to say some words in favor of, of oaks, ginkgos, and um, katsuras. Um, mm. I also wanted to ask you, I, I re, after my big oak fell, I planted a a tall oak, whatever you could get for $300. How many years is it going to be before? I mean, our other one was like, it was probably 200 years old, but I mean, how, when is it going to look like a tree and give some shade right now? It's got like, it's a few le year leaves, but I have a ginkgo. I got to tell you, it's, it's people say it's the biggest ginkgo they've seen. And it's, it's the male one and the glory of all those leaves, leaves turning gold and then dropping all at once. I've, I've videoed it and you can hear the leaves making noise as they fall. It's beautiful. And then they stay in this golden circle around the tree for a while. And the katsuras, I know they're obviously not native, they were, but they're absolutely wonderful trees. Um, mm. These are all big, tall trees when they get there, but um, you know, are those just not practical for what you're handing out? No, they're practical. It's just um, we. I think we can only order two because we have to get a hundred of each choice. So um, I can. Yeah. Um, so there. Um, the the papa is for uh, for hundred trees. It's two seventy one, two hundred seventy one dollars for the tulip poplar. It's two hundred two dollars and fifty cents. So that'd be four seventy four hundred seventy three dollars and fifty cents for those two species. Um, and I would need a, a vote from the shade tree committee to spend the funds from the tree fund uh, for those trees. Ellen, once, we de thoughts? once we decide what we're going to buy. <laughs> yeah. Ellen, do you have thoughts? 
Oh, sorry. I find it very hard to engage in discussion when I'm taking minutes. So apologies for being quiet. Um, no, um, I love this project and people seem excited and um, I don't think it matters. I think it's just more about um, education and, hmm. you know, I, I think if I recall from the last time when I handed out seedlings, I had remembered that it would have been nice to have photos or something of the tree when it was mature, um, because people, a lot of people didn't really know what this tree was going to look like. Um, you know, I remember saying like, oh, it should be planted in here and how much you should water it. But I wonder um, if we could include some type of instructions for, uh, you know, I just worry that so many people take it and don't really care for it. But um, maybe if there's some type of, um, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, you know, we could do a little ribbon around it or something with the planting instructions, care, you know, care instructions for the first few weeks and, um, you know, maintenance and maybe a great photo of what it will look like. You know, you want to think about, you know, how big it's going to grow. If it's, if you plant it right next to your house, it may not make sense. So just, just some education and care um, instructions I feel would be helpful. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. And I think maybe also including something that um, uh, lets people know what to expect from the tree in terms of like its its benefits to them. It's been like, does it attract birds? Why, why should they want to plant this tree? Um, and um, to plug the service berry again, I think like foraging is very in right now with young people. And so if we want 200 seed saplings, seedlings going out, I think, I think service berry and or pawpaw again, um, good option because people are excited about being able to eventually pick, pick things from these trees that they can eat. My experience with uh, service berry, which I love, I mean, they flower beautifully in my yard and I used to eat the berries. I mean, I like them better than blueberries, but um, all of my service berries now get um, service berry cedar rust and I don't get almost any berries. The birds pick a few at the top that still are edible, but most of them are not edible and they don't look that good after a bunch of years. So. Um, you know, uh, I think people are excited about pawpaws too. And I think I don't want to offer two smaller trees. So we'd have to choose between those two. Yeah. And I think the tulip poplar is a, a great option as well. Do we want to consider Katsura or the other ones that Dorothy mentioned? Katsura is oh. not an option. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Just that. Okay. I would say just native as much as possible. All right, so Papa and Tulip, should we vote on that? Thumbs up, yeah. And, okay. And uh, I have a motion, motion to uh, approve the funding. Yeah, uh, okay. Thumbs up or down? Well, I think that okay. the, Committee chair or somebody needs to make the motion first. And then Robert's rules here. I propose we we don't follow Robert's rules exactly, but I propose that we um, authorize the spending of the money from the gift tree fund for the um, pawpaws and what did we just say tulip poplars uh, in the amount of approximately four hundred and fifty dollars. I'll second that. Okay. Now thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Can I, can, can someone send me the paperwork? I need, again, I need the, the wording of the, of the um, motion uh, and, the, Sarah, and the vote. Treasurer. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can put it together um, and then email it to you, Henry, for a signature. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I know, uh, again, sadly, I will not uh, be able to attend the sustainability fair. Um, it seems to fall on this annual weekend that I am away. Um, but I will happily contribute by making 
I don't, you know, we can talk about it, but I don't want to use too much paper, obviously, but some type of uh, form or something that could be handed with whichever sapling that people choose um, just on care and maintenance and benefits. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. I'd be happy to help with that. So. Oh, thank you. That'd be great. Okay. I'll be uh, still walking at the sustainability festival, so I will be there since I'm hired to, I'm hired to be there. Um, okay. Uh, we've lost people visually, but hopefully they're still there. Um, any other events for Arbor Month, Arbor Day? Um, I, I have some things to add if we want to. Go ahead, yeah quickly um so i um you know as part of our heritage tree grant with dcr you know we said we're going to do some arbor day events talk about the big sycamore at the Amherst history museum um i've reached out to the jones library and to their uh youth um youth uh librarian in charge of the youth you know uh programming and um they're going to look into doing a book kind of reading and put out a table with lots of books related to trees um, for Arbor Day. Um, and then we're going to do a tree planting, um, uh, you know, after the, the book reading. So it may be at the Munson Library, it may be at the Jones Library, it may be, maybe we'll plant the, the sycamore tree to replace the um, the mate that you know blew over in the 38 hurricane um, at the Amherst History Museum, which is also something else we said we were going to do for the grant. <laughs> um, so that's in that's in line to coordinate this book reading with the Jones Library um, and get some youth involved. And so another opportunity to give out seedlings there um, to folks to take home. Uh, let's see what else. We have a date for that. Is that going to be on? Um, Not sure day? yet. Yeah, uh, we okay. do Arbor month in Amherst. So um, yeah. we will be asking the town council to vote to approve a, uh, Arbor month again this year um, in April. Alan, so I don't know how much you're involved with the programming, but um, local Amherst resident, um, Aaron Becker, he's an amazing um, illustrator. He, he specializes in tree book. Yes, <laughs> specializes in wordless books. And he just has a new book called The Tree and the River or The River and the Tree. I haven't seen it yet, but I got five star reviews. It's supposed to, it's getting tons and tons of buzz. He's right here in town. Um, he has he, young kids too. So I, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would be willing to participate in some I way. I think he but, would be great if he could do a reading or book signing or I mean it just seems like a natural uh, and maybe Mia's already contacted him um, yeah. but yeah no I just reached out to the library uh, I called him on Monday but I just person I need to talk to was off on Mondays um, so I contacted them again today and managed to touch base with them and so this is really in early stages of the okay. of planning so um, yeah, and and Alan, feel free to you know I'm happy to help out with that as much as possible. I could also put together some type of like kids environmental education activity where they're like doing something with the trees around there in some way. You know, uh, happy happy to help and brainstorm. Thank you. Um, and then um, I've also uh, so Amherst College recently. Um, decided to join the Tree City USA uh, program. It's, they're part of the Tree Campus USA. UMass is part of the Tree Campus USA program. Many colleges and universities are joining that. Um, so um, they reached out to me you know, a couple months ago about it to try to coordinate a little bit because um, part, part of this is reaching out into the community about trees and Arbor Day. Um, and they're going to look into hosting a speaker um, for us this um, this Arbor Month at some point. And again, I'm going to try to get um, Kevin Smith from the U.S. Forest Service from Durham, New Hampshire, office um, to talk about um, the difference between you know mature trees, old trees, and, and young trees. And he he gives a great presentation. Um, and I'm hoping I can get him to come. I just can't. I need to get 
a commitment of a venue where we can actually have, you know, 50 or so people. Um, I thought it'd be great to see if we could get onto Amherst College campus and get some of those students engaged in, you know, trees in town and things like that. Um, and then, you know, so we reach out to the university and Amherst College, Hanford College, and, and try to get folks involved that way. Um, so hopefully we can pull this off and Amherst College can host it um, and help publicize it on their campus as well. Um, great. Uh, I, I would just say very quickly on the record because I'll be mad at myself if I don't, I think it's great that Amherst College is offering to do this. I think they have a very poor record of um, tree care and uh, you know, cutting down healthy trees with little reason off of their campus on properties that they own. So I will, I will just say that. I, I, I understand where you're coming from there. <laughs> um, I do, I, I would say also that they also do an amazing job caring for the trees they have. So they're, they're mature trees that are on campus. On campus, um, yes. Are, are, you know, <laughs> they spend good money on keeping those trees healthy. And the, most folks don't know that that large area of if you're standing on the, the main common looking south, there's this large grass area that goes down towards the bike trail. That's all town property. That's all part of the original town common. And the Amherst College has, you know, essentially a life lifetime lease on that to maintain it. Um, mm. Those are all technically town trees and they've, they, they keep that space green um, and looking pretty good. So um, I, I have to say they do spend a lot of time and money on caring for trees. Their offsite stuff is a different kind of a different department. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah. So. Um, Dorothy, you had your hand up. Do you want to add? Yeah, I wasn't going to say this, but when she mentioned the local illustrator, I my mind had been roving with this and I was going to contact you later. Uh, you know, there's this big thing about plant a tree in Israel and you get, when you make a donation, you get this lovely certificate that you can frame and you give it to people for random occasions. I mean, we could have a plant a tree in Amherst thing with a, you know, 25, 50 or a hundred dollars. I mean, I'm talking about reasonable money and you would get a beautiful certificate at this. And I was thinking, well, how would they know about it? Well, this could be advertised probably on the town, um, you know, the, the whole Engage Amherst or town website, which they're doing. Um, that just it might be one ongoing way of raising money that people might actually like. Um, and you could, of course, have booths at events or, you know, uh, when you have your uh, outdoor sustainability festivals or whatever. Um, people might like the idea of planting a tree in Amherst. Interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That could go into the gift fund. The money could go there. And that's great. Um, costs more than costs about three hundred dollars to plant one tree in Amherst, but uh, yeah, here, yeah. Okay, um, we're not going to get through the whole agenda today. Um, let's go next to um, second Saturday planting sites. Um, Julian had some ideas. I want to put out South Pleasant again as a place, South Pleasant Street, down from downtown as you go past the um, golf course and the parking lot by Hitchcock Center and things like that. So I know, Alan, I've brought that up before and you've had reasons why not, but as a wide grass belt, it seems like a perfect place to plant some trees. So, um, Julian? Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Julie, you had some ideas? Yes. So um, I spoke about earlier in that Watson Farms area off of Main Street. That was one suggestion. We can always do planting in the downtown area. Um, another spot that I was thinking of was, um, and maybe this isn't possible, do you know, the grass belt? on East Hadley Road between the street and the multi-use path. Is that 
an area we're allowed to plant in. I know we've worked in that neighborhood before. Yeah, that's a pretty tight grass belt. It's there's oh, not gosh. a lot of root zone there, unfortunately. And that's um, got it. Thank you, Complete Streets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, we could do some maintenance up in. Uh, not on, not inside the Atkins Rotary, but on the side of it towards the woods. There's a lot of trees over there that seem to be getting overrun with vines and whatnot. So we could clean that area up a little bit, but those were the three things that I noticed. Anyone else have ideas for planting? I had suggested um, along Main Street uh, near Amherst Dental, there's a ton of stumps, I guess that probably have to be ground up first, but um, obviously some very large trees have been taken or fallen down over the years there. And there's a bus stop and a um, sidewalk and there's people on, you know, all the time. So I think it could use some shade. Is this down at the bottom of the hill toward mm -hmm. the university? Yeah. Great. I, I have a couple neighborhoods. Um, so unfortunately, Blue Hills and Dana Street have been losing a lot of trees and we continue. There are more that need to come down. I know we've done a planting on um, Blue Hills many years ago. Those trees are all, they've all survived and they're all doing pretty good, um, but they've lost more tree cover on that street um, and they just desperately really need it. Dana also has been losing um, you know, a lot of it's sugar maple trees. Um, so I would, we could do, um, could do a Dana, Blue Hills Dana, uh, Amity Street sort of planting. Um, these are all they're pretty tight, you know, neighborhoods close to one another. Um, so we could probably, you know, could probably get 20 trees in, you know, if we had a big group. Um, and then um, Fearing Street desperately needs trees. Um, I also had Main Street um, needs trees. Most of Main Streets can be setback plantings because we don't have much of a right away there at all. So. And then I think we spoke about Greenwich Road off of Long Meadow in that area. We did, yes. Yep. yep. So that's more than enough for <laughs> the, yeah. the summer planting. <laughs> We just kind of need to prioritize. Um, okay. If I had to, if I had to prioritize, I would say that Dana, Blue Hills, uh, Amity, Fearing, and Main Street. Uh, Orchard is still there. I forget. Sorry, I forget Orchard Street. Um, and we've lost a lot of trees on Orchard Street as well. Um, actually, out to um, there's a little footbridge that goes over the bike trail goes to Woodside Orchard and Woodside kind of meet at this kind of weird interest round intersection and then crosses the footbridge, which continues as Woodside Ave <clears throat> out to Shea Street. Um, and there's a nursery school there, um, daycare facility. Uh, and that area has lost a lot of trees uh, as well. So we've got, as always, there's plenty of opportunity to plant trees. Yeah. All right, and so then once sure. they're done with the Route 9 project, we could look into that area. Yeah. In several years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what should we do with the April planting? Uh, let's pick a place for that. Um, I, I mean, I think uh, focusing downtown somewhere, you know, as close to downtown as possible. Um, so that would be Amity, Dana, Blue Hills, maybe kind of thing. Uh, Amity and Fearing. Preferences, people? I mean, I would prioritize whatever area has the least tree coverage and um, you know, the population with uh, perhaps the greatest 
uh, I would say more more diverse neighborhoods um, as if possible. Okay. I'd also prioritize areas that are closer to downtown or more easily accessible and potentially larger plantings while school is still in session. We usually get some collaboration with UMass um, while there's students around campus. And then, you know, once once school's out and after graduation, we usually have a lot smaller um, volunteer groups. So uh, prioritizing larger plantings um, and things that are easier to get to for students who don't have cars um, while school's still in session. So like April, May, those first two months. That's a great point. Yeah, that would be the Amity then, Fairing Street, um kind of locations. Yeah, let's do that. Amity, so Amity, Fearing. Amity Fearing. Yeah. And if uh, there's not enough trees, we can maybe expand onto Dana. <laughs> Excuse me. We also have the, I um, can't remember what it was. Was it 12, 12 or so uh, sweet gums that Amherst College donated to the town. Oh. Um, so we have those to plant. Great. All right, so let's start working toward that. Anything else on this? No? Um, so Mary Maple, we did Arbor Day plans, sustainability festival, individual tree requests. Let's table that for now. Uh, town tree tour. Um, again, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it Mother's Day, but we can keep that, keep thinking about that. And um, um, Ellen, we should meet at some point and continue working on the uh, the written uh, brochure. That was, um, was, I thought, we, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Ellen, I jumped in. Oh, I thought we were gonna look into a QR code instead of a brochure from our lot at our last meeting. Yeah, we were gonna look into an app perhaps, but um, nobody had those skills, so. Um, Apps are um, gone by the wayside. So QR codes, anything that's like web-based is- Yeah, QR codes are super easy. You can generate one in five seconds, you know, a second. And then if you have information on, on a website, it's very simple to connect those. So we would need a, a website that's Town Tree Tour and then we would link to it or? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, well, we can start thinking about that. I'm not exactly sure how that would work. Um, so I don't, the, the, using the town website for that, I don't think would quite work. So, um, yeah. yeah but then we have to pay to host a site. Yeah, from, yeah. The, from the meeting minutes last month, uh, Britt and Henry will pursue possibility of creating an app with support from UMass students as a more effective way to bring the town tree tour to the public. Yeah, we haven't followed up on that, but I, you know, if if you all or we all discuss, I guess what we're looking for, I I could offer an opportunity to students for credit to develop some kind of app. I think I don't I don't know how easy that is, <laughs> um, but we could explore it. I I I don't know. I feel like something that like a QR code or something that just links you right to our to the town website and we have our own, I don't know if we can design a microsite on the town site, if they let each, the different town committees have their own sort of sub site. Well, we have I think a that's page. Possible. Okay. We have a page, but it's cumbersome to work through the town IT department and Bennett's supposedly working on updating ours. Um, and then every page needs a lot of like this this format that the town has, so yeah. it's a little complicated. Is there oh. we we can link QR codes, I believe, to documents. So if we had like a PDF or a PowerPoint that That's was true. translated into PDF that was then put on our website, we could link a QR code for each site to hmm. each page of the PDF. So that might be an easy way Whoa. to. And 
and then if someone develops something more thorough, like an actual interactive app that walks you through it or something, that could be an upgrade, which would be super cool. But if there might be an easy way to kind of just put down the, the tour into a, a simple document that we host on the website and then have a different QR code for each page. Britt, do you think a student might be willing to develop that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could offer it for credit and supervise it. Um, I have a current student who's doing some work with DCR. D, I always want to say DC. It's DCR, right? I always want to say DRC, yes. like the Congo. Yeah. Um, DCR. Um, on some tree related things they might be interested. So yeah, I think I think we could I could put something out there and see see what we get back. Yeah, let's do that. Um, um we have a lot of the stuff written and we have some photos. We'll need some better photos, but we could give the information pretty quick if someone developed that. Great. All right. Um UMass interns, anything new on that? Oh, this is uh, sort of the same thing, yeah. Uh, town budget line item we did. Uh, tree nursery, let's table that, it's getting late. Any news on the tree inventory or any social media update? I guess the, well, Julian's here for that. I don't have my, many updates for social media. Mm -hmm. um, I posted a little thing in, it, in advance of this meeting. Um, so, and I'll try to keep doing that as much as I remember to. Um, so that is it. Um, Sarah, could you tell me the budget again? Um, I don't see it on the December minutes or January minutes. So I missed yeah. 14,000. Hold on just a second. 14,912 and 79 cents. And I wasn't at the January meeting to give my report, okay. um, but it was the same. So it's been the same December, January, and February. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, so Alan, anything new on the tree inventory? Nothing new to update. Okay. And anything new on the significant tree ordinance? Sarah? Nope. Okay. Nope. I haven't worked on that. On the solar um, bylaw group and the, the groups you've been meeting with, Julian. I understand they have a meeting this Friday, I think, but I'd have to double check the town website. So I'll attend that. Great. All right. Uh, anything else? It's already seven, so I, I do need to end it fairly soon. I don't want to tax you guys either. So. Yeah, I don't want to take anything past time. I did have somebody ask me today about uh, significant trees being cut down at the Hickory Ridge um, golf course. Um, so I just want, I said I would bring it up um, to the committee. That's the contractor doing the solo project, the Hickory Ridge. Yeah. It's all been approved and permitted. I assumed so. I, I said I would bring it up. They were, you know, upset so yeah at this phase in the project alan is it still privately owned and the ownership hasn't turned over to the town yet i can't ask i don't i'm not sure i can't answer that question intelligently okay. so i right. i worked on that project at the company i was at previously doing um some plant planting plans for their turtle habitat mm -hmm. um but then it's, it was turned over to a coworker for the later stages. So I don't know the latest, but I, I am aware of uh, the, at least the, the overall framework of, of that project. Um, so I understand it will be turned over to the town um, after it's been built. All right, anything else? No? Well, thank you, Dorothy, uh, for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your support. And we'll, yes, we'll get you, you something. We'll get you something about um, yeah the line item budget item. So right, and yeah. after hearing the treasurer's report, list what kind of money you mean, because I have no idea. 
I mean, how much we would ask? Yeah, how much? How much? 40,000. 40,000. Is what we're going for. And okay. like, just to give you an idea, there's capital requests for 40,000 to remove trees, for example. So that would be an addition, right? Uh, yeah, that would be an addition. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, well, you'll, you'll have that in the report just because, yeah. uh, very good. Um, and put down what you, what you want and what you need. And I have no idea, but you know, the least we can do is to get this uh, in the mind. I mean, there are things that aren't even on the list to do like a new senior center. We've, we've got a huge list of stuff, but yeah. compared to what we're doing in terms of money, this is not a huge amount, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is possible, it is possible that this could happen, at least from my point of view. So, um, right. So that's my hope. Okay, so thank you for all the good work all of you are doing. It's been really interesting and informative listening to your meeting um, and finding out all the things you're doing. So uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Thanks and for thank joining Thank you, everyone. Um, we will have a tree hearing and a site visit before our next meeting. So yeah. Meanwhile, um, yeah, keep up the good work and keep thinking about new stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And Bye, Henry, kids. I just wanted to offer that if you need help for the next meeting, um, to reach out and let me know. Thanks. I, I, I can coordinate with one. Julian. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Thank sir. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.